Welcome back to part 5 in my series, Can Dragon Fire Melt That? We've got one more test with the oxyacetylene torch. Again, we're getting some help from David and Brian Lee at Hot Shop Valpo. Dave and Brian run a local glass blowing shop. It's literally the hottest place in town. They produce some wonderful pieces, teach glass blowing classes, and were super supportive of my crazy experiment. If you visit the Valparaiso University campus, be sure to check out the art installation they built for us. This time we're testing with a little metal throne model. The results were again surprising. We all expected this to quickly turn into a puddle, but that didn't happen. I heard some complaints before saying my videos were just a lot of torch noise, so let me talk over this video test. I assembled this little throne model from a thin sheet cutout. You have to twist it around and remove little pieces from the sheet and fold it and insert tabs into slots and that sort of thing. It takes some time. It's actually a lot of small sharp edges and a lot of the patience it took to uh, get that uh, It seems a real shame to destroy it. So this should be fun. The first thing you notice here is the tips of the tiny swords turn red first. These quickly melt and fall away. Other protruding bits fall off and the surface glows and seems to bubble. The camera is set up here with a manual shutter. I'm adjusting the shutter to have a 16,000th of a second shutter speed. Notice that the background is dark, but we're able to see into the flame. Dave and I are wearing uh, welding glasses. As we watch this, let's talk about a couple of the science critiques of Game of Thrones. We talked a lot about the color of fire. The principal complaint is that a fire hot enough to melt steel would be blindingly hot. We can debate how you might add some chemicals to a flame to enhance the yellow color, but you can't ignore the fact that if a flame is quickly heating steel, it must have enough heat to produce bright light of all colors, white hot. One viewer commented that perhaps the definition of color doesn't apply to a light source bright enough to quickly destroy your retina. And that's a valid point. It's a little like asking what fire smells like or does lava feel squishy? The experience so far exceeds the detection limits of the measuring tool that you can't interpret the results. I drove a car with a broken gas gauge for a while. How full was the tank? I could guess from other means, but I couldn't say for sure. If you wanted to know if lava is squishy, perhaps you could define squishiness in terms of a material's viscosity, uh, density, surface tension, or other properties. Then you could poke lava with a stick to measure those characteristics. But it really is an academic exercise in extending your perception of the world. You might conclude that lava is squishy but you will never actually dip your hand into it and find out. There's not really a color that describes the sensation of quickly destroying your retina with very intense light. In this case, bright white seems like a good term for the light. If you have a better description, leave it in the comments below. But yellow fire is certainly not hot enough to melt the Iron Throne. The second main critique of Game of Thrones is the amount of time it takes to bring steel up to its melting point. I've got a lot of viewer statistics on the first video. Viewers tend to drop out when the video gets long and boring. Two minutes of a video watching a flame slowly heat an object is boring, I'll admit. But that's also the point. These scale tests show how long it takes for a really hot fire to transfer significant heat to an object. The fire from the Game of Thrones dragon would need to be extremely hot to melt a sword quickly. You don't just stand next to a fire like that and squint slightly, crying for your lost queen. Back to the test we're conducting right here. This little scale model isn't melting. We've done some damage, we've cut a hole through parts of it. We've even seen most of it start to glow red. After the first burst of melting, it seems to have just stopped. What's going on here? I sent some photos to my friend Dan and asked if he could explain this. Dan works for a steel mill and immediately knew the answer. He said, certain oxides are very cut resistant. Oxides formed by a torch that don't fall free are thermally resistant and can't be cut with heat. I'm using scrap oxides as heat shielding, he said. What exactly is this stuff? Well, I don't know. Iron oxides take many forms. We've got iron here, we've got carbon, there's oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen from the air. Standard rust, F2O3, also known as iron-3, forms slowly when iron comes into contact with water. Uh, and it typically exists with lots of water molecules hanging onto it. 
But iron-3 can take other forms, including hematite and magnetite and a few other mineral forms. It can be red or orange or green or black. Some of these oxides are very heat resistant. And there may be other things present in the metal we started with, including chromium and nickel and copper, sulfur and manganese. These are usually in stainless steel or might be plated on the steel. And the chemistry quickly gets very complicated. But we don't have to know what it is to see that it is very heat resistant. And when that heat resistant layer forms on the surface, you can see that the heat isn't getting through to the rest of the metal, the back side of the model, the, the different layers. So we have a new data point. Last time we saw that the thermal properties of glass cause it to simply shatter when you try to heat it quickly. Steel is much more heat resistant to these thermal stresses. But now we've found that heating steel very quickly can cause chemical changes to the surface that can block further heating. We're still planning to ramp this up to do a full-scale test with a really big torch. If you happen to have a full-sized iron throne and wouldn't mind us turning it into slag, please send me a note. Or maybe some farmer out there has an inclination to build an iron throne using a scrap a disc plow or some cultivator tines. If we can't find a real throne, we're on the lookout for a cast iron bathtub that could serve as a stunt double for the iron throne. Oh, and don't try this at home. Come over to my house.